Dear friends, today we have with us a very special guest. Uh, we have with us celebrity nutritionist Munmun Bhairiwal. Uh, he is also the author of Yukta Har, the Belly and Brain Diet. Uh, Munmun, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me over. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Munmun, let's start with your book. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is it about? And uh, tell us a bit about it. Uh, obviously, you can't tell us about the whole book, but uh, what are the <laughs> key uh, points uh, in your book? So my book, Yukta Har, it has a 10-week diet that can uh, help you reset your metabolism, lose weight, and restore your physical and mental health. It primarily focuses on, it focuses on the gut microbiome. It tells you steps on how you can restore and rebalance your gut flora using Ayurvedic principles and traditional Indian foods and not just foods, but also exercise, meditation, sleep and yoga as important tools. All right. And um, uh, if I may ask you, Munmun, um, if you could tell us a bit uh, about your own background and how did you decide to uh, take up this profession? When did you first know that you have a passion for this? So, yeah, I mean, it was purely by chance. It's been 20 years that I have been working as a nutritionist. So I was, uh, a, you know, a 12th science pass out. And I was very bright and, uh, you know, as a bright student. So it was the year of, you know, 99, 2000 when I passed out. And at that time, I'm talking about like 20 years back, anybody who is good in his subject, like primarily science, would have only two options, which is either you become a doctor or you become an engineer. And so um, I did go for engineering at that point of time. So I did my engineering for two years. And... Uh, yeah, and then uh, in my second year of engineering is when I met another nutritionist and we become friends. And then I realized that, you know, I have a calling for this and this is what I would really love to do. Nutrition at that time in that year wasn't as glamorous or as desirable a career as it is now. So I didn't know what my future would hold. I didn't know I would be an author. I didn't know I would be catering to the Indian film industry people as a nutritionist. I just knew that I will, I have a thing for this subject and I see myself as a good nutritionist in future than being a bad engineer. So um, that is how I decided to, you know, take the plunge. The good thing for me was like my father supported me. My friends thought my friends as in my uh, classmates who were there with me in engineering, they thought I've gone crazy uh, <laughs> because they were like that who reads nutrition and who quits, you know, engineering to study nutrition and fitness. So, yeah. so they did think I am crazy. So, uh, but yeah, it all worked well for me. And I meet the same friends today and they, uh, you know, they, they tell me, oh, you were really intelligent for that age. You really knew that what you had to do. You had it all sorted out for yourself and you're still figuring out. So I'm like, yeah, So <laughs> I think I had a good journey that way. Yeah. Uh, now, Munmun, I uh, do want to ask you this, that, you know, a lot of diets and a lot of uh, things uh, floating around, you know, that you should be on this diet or that diet or eat this or don't eat that. I mean, how does a person really decide what suits them best or what they should follow? Yeah. So I would like to say that if, you know, there, if any of these diets, diets worked, then there wouldn't have been so many. Right. Uh, when it comes to uh, weight loss and health, the problem is that we always want to lie low. We do not want to get ambitious. So anybody that comes and tells us that, OK, I'm doing this diet and, uh, you know, promises weight loss with this diet, we are ready to plunge into it. We are ready to try it without looking at its pros and cons. Um, if I tell you that, you know, what are the things that you would look for in your life from partner? You would not just tell me about one quality. You would probably tell me about at least seven to ten qualities because we are ambitious when it comes to that. Uh, if I ask you what's what's your dream job or what's a good workplace for you, you again would have like 20 of things to say that, you know, it should have this, it should have that. We want so many things out of that, right? Or even something as basic as a car. You would say that the color should be this, the design should be this, the mileage should be this, the body, the this and that, everything, right? We want everything uh, when we want to choose other things in life. But unfortunately, when it comes to diet, we just want to settle down with anything that gives us weight loss. Uh, weight loss, 
you know can come through anything if you starve if you are sick if you have fever if you have diarrhea all of this all of these things can give you weight loss you go and meet a, somebody in a cancer treatment center you will see that he is losing weight so what i'm trying to say is that weight loss does not necessarily imply health so when you go for a diet there are few things that you should check there are few things that you should ask yourself for example you should ask does this diet make me feel lighter and energetic or does this diet make me feel lethargic tired and wanting to sleep all the time am i constantly craving for the foods that i want to eat or am i con- content with the foods that this diet is asking me to eat um if i am working out then does my diet Uh, enhance my workout performance or is it taking away that potential if i am not working out then does my diet make me feel like plunging into an exercise routine mm. you know uh, does my diet make me feel happier and calmer or does it make me feel irritated and frustrated and angry all the time so every area you know is is something where you should see an improvement whether it's your skin whether it's your sleep whether it's your bowel movements whether it's your mood whether it, even if it's the color of your tongue because a good diet can give you a nice pink healthy uh, tongue and uh, whether it's the way you smell because if you have a bad body odor or if you have a smelly breath then a good diet should be able to correct that so so uh, you know if you are not able to tick mark most of these boxes if not all then you should have an understand that you're probably on the wrong diet um yeah and um, i also wanted to ask you this that indian food of course is the most diverse and one of the tastiest in the world of course uh, how healthy it is because there are these uh, you know all sorts of perceptions uh, so uh, you know want to ask you how healthy is uh, indian food i mean of course it's very diverse but generally speaking yeah yeah so it depends on what you think of as indian food right because if you're talking about the basic khichdi dal chawal roti bhakri sabzi matha achar chaas all of these stuff then of course it's it's great because it provides you the right balance of the ma- macros along with the micros but uh, of late especially for people living abroad they've started thinking of indian food as uh you know dal makhani and butter chicken and chicken tikka or maybe pav bhaji so if you're talking about all that uh, then of course you should you i mean i'm not saying that you should not eat them completely but you should not eat them regularly maybe like once in a week or once in two weeks Uh, sure and how important is it to have a balanced diet because as you mentioned before that people tend to equate losing weight with somehow uh, uh, you know uh, having a uh, you know healthy diet which is not true at all because uh, you could be losing weight even if you are on a bad diet or you know because of some other underlying factors so how important is it that that you know that you don't starve yourself or that you're not denying your body uh, you know food that you should uh, actually be eating right of course it is very important see we indians we come from the land of vedas and upanishads right and uh, uh, vedas and upanishads are known as apurushaya Upa, apurushaya the term means that something which is not written by human beings because it is believed that the vedas and upanishads are the words of ishvara of god himself and uh, these are you know meant of course for self realization which we also known as moksha but having said that something as deep it still doesn't miss talking about the importance of food so tetra upanishad says that all living beings are born out of food they live by food and ultimately they go back to it and merge into the food um chandogya upanishad has always told us about the connect between the food and the mind so if you eat junk you think junk if you eat clean you think clean right so if we i i really feel that you know we have started talking about balanced diet and nutrition for the last 20 years or 30 years in the west you know if we talk about western science and nutrition as a science uh, but for us indians the the importance of food has always been established the importance of balanced diet has always been established since thousands and thousands of years and it clearly says that you know a balanced diet a disciplined lifestyle with a sane routine is essential not not just for a fit body 
not just for a uh, you know fit mind a calm mind not just to free yourself from diseases but also to live a life which is more purposeful which is free from sorrows and unhappiness uh, you make a very pertinent point that this idea of balanced diet and a healthy lifestyle uh, is thousands of years old uh, in in india it's uh, it's not so much a western concept as many may feel it is uh, in today's absolutely country. absolutely yeah and uh, any recommendations for our viewers uh, in, you know the indian diaspora in australia as to how they can um, have a good diet some tips uh, you know where we where they can enjoy indian food as well as maybe some of local cuisine and as you said that if there's food that's really rich they they should surely have it but you know limit the number of times that they have it so any tips uh, you would like to give them of course i mean the book is there which is the entire uh, you know the book is there which can be followed by the indian australians in fact i have a lot of australian readers who constantly email me and message me on my instagram telling how much they have benefited from the book but if i have to just leave you with some tips i'll give you five of them uh, number one is that um, firstly you should take an inventory of your kitchen and just discard all the ultra processed foods now what are ultra processed foods first that's very important to understand what happens is whenever we go to a supermarket and we buy a food product we always look at the front label so we read things as gluten free vegan organic diet friendly keto high carb low carb you know multiple things are written on the front label to lure us to to make the product look attractive and we do give in and we start uh you know to buy them and we eat them thinking that we are eating very nice healthy clean food um on the contrary what you should really do is you should look at the back label because the back label is where the ingredients are written the back label is where it will tell you the real story so if the back label has say 10 to 11 ingredients then more often than not the product is ultra processed uh mm-hmm. if the uh, if the ingredient list tells you of foods of ingredients which you have not heard of right which which you would not use in a kitchen which sound unfamiliar which sound like chemicals like some numbers are or things like you know that the food is ultra processed uh you know like say a tapioca starch a gluten free bread can very well be a gluten free bread but when you see the ingredient label it would have something like tapioca starch modified starch all of these things which are not good for our health so the back mm. label is where you should put your focus on and once you do that and you start taking an inventory of your kitchen you will realize that the mass produced commercial breads the jams the marmalades the dips the gujiyas the namkeens the ketchups all of these are ultra processed so okay. you need to discard them and you need to stock your house with more unprocessed or minimally processed foods for example makhana which is the lotus nut uh mm-hmm. the nuts like the almonds and stuff the nuts dried fruit like raisins prunes all of these fresh fruits so these mm-hmm. are things that you should stock your you know kitchen and your house with um mm-hmm. just a very simple example you may buy bread thinking that it's multi grain and it's uh, gluten free but as i said it could very well be ultra processed in the mm. uh, on the contrary if you go to a bakery and buy bread which they are baking fresh and you ask them or you see the ingredients you will see not more than 3 or max 4 ingredients which would simply be flour water salt or maybe max sugar these are things mm. that you find in a kitchen therefore this is the kind of bread that you should be having discard mm. the processed cheese go for artisanal aged cheese because that's a good quality cheese so these are mm. things that can give you a quick meal in the house not uh, unhealthy uh, and it can once you do that you will see that there's a world of difference to your health uh, the number two thing is that cooking food is very important on an everyday basis at the same time it should not be the responsibility of a single person most of the time the women of the house is given the responsibility to cook food the problem is uh, of course i'm not getting into the gender inequality here but the problem here is that which of course is a uh, is is a important subject but i don't want to get into that the problem here is that once you delegate the entire kitchen chores to only one person the one person is definitely going to get overwhelmed 
and that's the reason when we start looking for ultra processed alternatives so yeah. it, the entire health of the family suffers because of that so it's very important that simple things like kneading a dough uh, boiling rice making khichdi setting curd these are very simple things that even the child of the house should know how to do because that is how you make homemade cooked food a reality in day to day life um you can just boil some rice make some uh, buttermilk out of the curd have some achar along with it and your one meal is ready so healthy food need not be a elaborate process is what i'm trying to say uh the number third point is millets have been a game changer when it comes to our health if you make a oats porridge you very well should also try a millet porridge um, mm. again millet is something that we need to be more comfortable with we think that it's very difficult to make but it's not just how you would boil rice there is also millet rice and you can just boil millet rice and have it in the same way and it's very simple to do even a 10 year old child can do it so there's fox tail millet rice proso millet rice a lot of these things which i've mentioned about in the book as well so millets is, is very important at least once a day you should have a millet meal um mm-hmm. the fourth point is that when you are eating food in the house as a family together ensure basic meal hygiene that there shouldn't be tv there shouldn't be phone uh, when you are having your meals no fights no arguments it's very important that you have a very nice atmosphere a very nice environment at home when you are eating your meals have regular meal timings and uh, the last point i will say that uh um, you know we love to eat out like you said the local australian cuisine is there and all that is great and of course we should have a variety of meals and i'm not saying that we shouldn't go out and eat at all but your uh, you know your days of going out should be fixed you should know you should have the discipline that i'll be going out and eating yeah, either once a week or maximum twice a week if you're socializing if you're one of those persons who loves to socialize then start opting for a brunch uh, social event instead of a big fat late night dinner all right and uh, just before you go last two questions uh, one or two dishes that you can recommend which can which people can make quickly uh, something at the top of your head uh, you know if you'd like to share with us yeah i mean as i said khichdi khichdi is a great meal it's a comfort meal it's it's in a bowl it's like a complete meal in a bowl you have lentils there uh, you have your grains which could either be the normal paddy rice or it could be millet rice you put nice vegetables which will give you the fiber and the minerals and the vitamins you put a ghee ka tadka so you have your good fats there you have all the spices which will give the thermogenic effect and will raise the metabolism so i feel khichdi is such an excellent meal and there are so many ways of making it like the bengalis make it in a different way the maharashtrians make it in a different way gujaratis have their own gujarati khichdi so it's so versatile and no one really gets bored of it it's like one of those comfort food that you want to come back to and it's like a complete nourishing meal in one bowl yeah it is it is and uh, just uh, before we go uh, you interact with so many celebrities any uh, you know favorite celebrities who are you know who have a balanced diet who are easy to deal with and uh, you know things like that would you uh, mention or, or all of them are good <laughs> all of them are excellent actually <laughs> i mean it's like uh, picking up your uh, uh, you know favorite child i would say so you know there's no uh, favorite out there all of them are great and they all are really you know very easy to work with because they are very disciplined people to begin with so uh, you know i just have to tell them what to do but i don't have to persuade them or convince them because they just need that guidance otherwise they have all the discipline and motivation to you know put things into action so i really really enjoy working with all of them yeah and and i think it's important that uh, you know we have food which is balanced and which we enjoy as well uh, but, you know the word in hindi is probably tripti you know that when you eat something you must it must satisfy your soul but at the same time it's important to uh, probably not overindulge and have a balanced diet uh, munmun thank you so much for joining with us and uh, best of luck and uh, yeah uh, very interesting to know that you shifted from engineering to uh, you know to this uh, field <laughs> yeah i did great talking to you yeah thank you so much thank you thank you so much